I recently had a question on how to install an engine mount like this one into a model rocket. So that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'd like to talk about installing an engine mount. Now this is one of those basic skills that you're going to use because almost all of the beginner level rockets require this skill of putting an engine mount into the tube. So this is the engine mount and I've already assembled it. And if you'd like to learn how to do this, I've also made a video on how to put these together and I'll link to it up here. But what you see is a body tube right here. It's called the engine mount tube or the motor mount tube. And then we have these centering rings and these are colored green. And that's just the color that we use here at Apogee Components. This metal thing right here is called the engine hook and this what holds the engine inside the motor tube so that it doesn't shift forwards or backwards. And then on the inside of this, which you probably can't see, is another ring, and that's called a thrust ring. And that keeps the engine from moving forward into the rocket. So now you have this built, and you have to put it into the tube. Normally, the tubes are paper tubes like this, but installing this inside of this, you're not gonna see anything. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've got some clear tubes like this. And we do sell these clear tubes at Apogee. And if you need them, they're on our website. Normally they're used for payload tubes. I probably wouldn't use it for a body tube because they will get sooty from the rocket engine. This right here is a payload tube. So you can see you can put a payload in there. The whole purpose is so you can see it from the outside. So I've got this tube in here. And this right here, this cord, which I forgot to tell you, is the shock cord. And this is attached to the nose cone so that when the nose cone comes off and the parachute comes out, everything comes down as one piece and you don't have to look for separate pieces. So the first thing that you want to do is to take the shock cord like this and take it and put it in through the front end and then out the back. And this will allow you to slide it into the tube without it getting in the way. So now we're, we're going to glue this into the tube. And normally you're going to use wood glue for this. If you're using a plastic tube like this, the wood glue is not going to stick. You have to use super glue. But for a paper tube, wood glue is the preferred choice. So what I'm going to use to put the wood glue inside of this tube is a wood dowel. If you don't have a wood dowel, just take your hobby knife. and You can use the back end, just pull the blade out so that you don't accidentally stab yourself. So our first thing is when we put this in, we're going to put a, a line of glue on the inside and we're going to use the wood dowel to spread it. So the distance that you want to put in the ring of glue on the inside of the tube, what I usually do is I'll take the tube and I'll lay the engine mount right next to it so that I can figure out how deep I need to go. So I'll lay them next to each other and then I'll take my, my dowel, go right next to it and I'm, I'm using the back edge of the tube and lining that with the back edge of the ring and then I'm going to slide this to where the front ring is. And then I'll just put my finger right there so that's the depth that I want to go for that front ring. Sometimes you can take a pencil and you can mark your wood dowel and that's a little easier. And then you just go up to the pencil line. So we got two rings and they both need glue on them. So when you put the wood glue on the dowel, roll the dowel in your hand because otherwise the wood glue is going to sag and get all over your table. So if you rotate it, it keeps it from sagging in one direction. So I can continue to rotate it like this and it doesn't sag. As soon as I start Stop it though, it's going to start sagging. So keep it rotating and then we're going to put it inside the dowel and you can see that I can spread it around inside there like that. So that's going to be for the front ring and then we're going to need to put another one here at the back but I'll, I'll show you the problem. So let me put another line of glue in here. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to put the second line of glue right there. So what's going to happen is when you push this ring in, it takes all that glue that was here and it pushes it forward. So now this ring back here is not going to have a lot of glue on it. So we need a way 
to make sure that this back ring gets as much glue as the front ring. So let me do this again and I'll show you a little trick that I use. Okay, so I have another engine mount right here. And again, I'm gonna take the shock cord and pull it out the back so it's out of the way. And then we're gonna, when we put this in, we're gonna kind of put it in halfway and then we're gonna try to tilt it sideways so that we can get glue on the inside of the tube. So there's my first line of glue. Now I'll put this in and I'm only putting it in just a little ways. What that allows me to do is to cock this sideways just a little bit so that I can get glue on the inside edge. I just want to put a little bit in, rotate it around, cock it this way. So now my gap is right there, the big gap. Put in a little bit more glue, do the same thing, rotate it around this way. So now this ring is all past glue line right here. So then I can push it in and when I get to the end, I'll just spin it around and now I've got a line of glue right there and a line of glue right there. Now this one is, you know, not so pretty, but it's in there. So that is the technique that I recommend for first time modelers. Now, sometimes some people are frustrated by doing that. So I actually made a special ring and you can see that this ring is serrated on the outside edge. And this little ring is only available in the Sky Metro kit. And we did it as a test and it actually works, but it's more expensive than the, the paper rings. So we don't put it in every kit. But what this allows us to do is to put in a line of glue and the serrations will pass through the glue. And instead of pushing all the glue forward, it only pushes a little bit. So again, what I'll do, this engine tube has one already glued on. Put my line of glue in there. And I'll also put my line of glue at the back end. So now I do have two lines of glue in here. And then when we push this one in, you can see it's only pushing in some of the glue. It leaves a lot of the glue here at the back end. And then I can push it in. And now my back ring does have some glue that's holding it in place. So you can see it, it pushed in all this extra glue right here. So there's kind of like a fillet on that front end. And here at the, on this end, there's just enough glue to hold it in place. So that's a little special ring that we made to kind of solve the problem of pushing that engine mount in and making sure that both rings have glue on them. So if you like this innovation, check out a lot of our kits at Apogee. All of them are pretty innovative and they have unique things that you don't find in other rocket companies' kits. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. My name again is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.